Hey everyone, so this is a quick, quick, quick video about a few assorted thoughts. So, uh, first off, I want to apologize. Like, I really didn't expect the Halloween cubes to do that well. So, we, I had to end up making all the Cubicle Labs products. So there's going to be a little bit of delay if you bought a Cubicle Labs product. And um, I'm working as hard as I can, 10, 12 hours a day plus, uh, to get these orders out for you. Like. I'm working really, really hard to get these out, and thank you so much for your patience. Um, and uh, Cubicle Labs is pretty much just me, so uh, it's one person doing all these orders, so it, it's a little overwhelming at times, but I promise I'm doing the best I can to get your order out. Um, the next thing I want to show you is this. Uh, it's just a Mojue M3, but um, when I first got the black, uh, sample prototype M3s here at the cubicle. Um, I didn't really like them. They were not very good at all. It was a combination of the spring and the plastic. Um, the black plastic is not as good as the um, stickerless plastic. Even the, st even the white plastic is not as good as the stickerless plastic. Um, you'll notice that the stickerless ones are way better than the normal ones. And uh, instead of a spring, I have magnets. And these magnets really, really change the M3. Um, currently, the M3 with magnets, or as I like to call it, the M4, is pretty much my main because uh, from a design standpoint, there really should be no reason that this cube isn't amazing. So you have aspects of the Mei Ying with the edge track, you have the uh, big corner feet, the uh, typical squared off shape, then you have the uh, square taper centers. Like, this cube should have been amazing, but um, just something with the plastic and the stock springs weren't very good, but the magnetized version is great. Um, with the magnetic tensions, uh, we have it set now that I can actually tune it to the right strength I need. Um, right now, with the Halloween projects, I'm super busy. Um, I'm experimenting with hydro printing. Uh, we have one sample sending out now. Um, but uh, the projects are going to slow down a little bit until after I finish all these things because I, I really want to prioritize sending things out. So another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, better competitions. Um, right now I've noticed a lot of competitions, they, uh, they run okay, and I'm not like directly calling people out, but people aren't optimizing competitions. Um, you have to use geometry basic logistics and shapes to maximize competitions. So a lot of competitions you go to, you'll have a row, maybe two rows, and then a scramble table and a drop-off table. So it'll look like this, basically. So uh, you got your tables, and then drop-off tables, and um, the weird thing is you'll notice a lot of competitions on the East Coast they set aside like tons of room for guests. And to me, that makes no sense whatsoever. Um, so recently at a competition I helped run uh, and I delegated was uh, Princeton. And it ran pretty well, uh, 130 plus people. We maxed out on rounds, four rounds three by three, three rounds pyraminx, three rounds OH, uh, two rounds four by four. We, we maximum rounds, kilominx, and we even got to have finish 35 minutes ahead of time. And the way I did that was because of geometry. So it didn't happen exactly as I planned. I wanted to go further out into the audience, um, but I couldn't because I was a little late and I couldn't set up. Um, but ideally, a competition should not cater to spectators. It should be specifically for the competitors. Competition should be using 50% of the space just for the competitors to ensure that the competitors have the best experience because the spectators can always walk around and leave. And at the end of the day, are you going to remember that, wow, you got the seat and you got to sit there for eight hours or you had a great competition experience, things weren't cluttered, people could walk around and you actually, because honestly you go there to solve and you, the crux of the day should focus on getting the best atmosphere for your solve. We need, we need to start pushing more competitor space and less spectator space. Because spectators are flexible. 
uh, you're not very flexible when you're doing your solids. Um, the next thing is arranging things, making sure that the dead zones are being covered and you don't have runners walking more than like 50 meters, even 20 meters to the spot. So at Princeton, what we had was two scramblers, two drop-off tables, and a large centralized, a large central waiting area and two scramble stations. And the way that works is the runners will only have to run here on the flanks and they never have to run here. So they never get in the way of the competitors and the competitors will always hear because they're all in the middle. And since they're in the middle, no matter where their cube is brought back, they will hear where they have to go. And this is a really good arrangement. A better arrangement is a semicircle. And a semicircle with staggered tables is the optimal arrangement. So you have the stations in a semicircle, scrambling areas, because the radius in here is like that. And the reason is for every Euclidean geometric shape, the circle has the greatest amount of, uh, has the greatest perimeter per surface area. And area is important because that's how much space you get for the people. And this will allow you to have the maximum amount of scr scrambling, station. scrambling stations, runners out of the way of the scrambling stations, and the most amount of timer stations per the amount of area that you're given. And if you notice, the radius from the middle of the circle is the same no matter where you are in a circle. And that's an important geometric feature that you want to do in your competitions because no matter where the stations are, the amount of distance the competitor has to go is the same. Whereas in a straight line, it's shorter to go to these than it is to here. And you'll start to see some stations get left out. And that's not good because you need to get all the stations manned to get as many solves as possible because people really care about their results and speed solving is all about getting the best competitive experience that you can. And uh, that's why we need to push into the audience more competitor space, semicircular uh, timing stations, and then multiple scrambling stations, two people each at least, because you have to get these attempts through to get a good scram to get a good competition. And uh, pretty much that's basically it for arrangement. There are other small stuff like sorting. You don't want to have two people of the same name in the same heat. Um, things like that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how you use geometry and cubing. Um, sorry for delaying cubicle labs, and uh, the M3 is a pretty good cube. Uh, pretty, sh pretty soon I can show you an example of hydroprinted cubes. Um, but yeah, just an update and a few random thoughts. Thanks for listening.